Well, hey there, everybody. This is Brian. I started a project the other day restoring a wrench that I found. And I'm going to nickel plate it. And I got about halfway done, then I thought I should make a video on this, on nickel plating. Not so much a video on how to nickel plate. There are a lot of videos out there on that already. But a video on why you should start nickel plating in your garage. I do quite a bit of it. It's easy to do. It's pretty cheap to do. And it's really nice to be able to restore parts nice and shiny. And then when they have a nickel plating on them, they don't rust. And I feel if I do a video and show you some of the tricks and tips that I do and show you how easy it is, it may give you the confidence you need to start doing it. Because my bet is you already know everything there is to know about doing it and you probably already have most of the materials you need. So let's start looking at what we're doing and how to do it. I have this tool cart full of tools. It's antique. I remember seeing it in the house when I was probably seventh grade. And now it's in my house. It's been up in the attic for at least 20 years. And it's full of things that aren't very valuable. And I'm going to give the whole thing away. I'm going to go to a tractor show this weekend and just give this to somebody who sells antiques. But in the box was one of these wrenches. I don't really know what those wrenches are called. This is my personal one that I have in my toolbox. I painted it Ellis Chalmers orange and I periodically use it. It's kind of useful. But I found one of those in this toolbox and I thought I would straighten it up. It was really in rough shape. It was bent and every other thing. At first I was going to powder coat it. But then I decided to plate it with nickel. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. The nickel plating process and how you can do it too. In your garage, you can nickel plate too. And just let me show you a few tricks to get you started. Let me show you everything I've used so far or will use to do this nickel plating process. Some standard household chemicals which you may already have or you can easily get and I'm going to go through the purpose of these but just hold on you'll need some electrolyte I think they call it the nickel solution this is my nickel solution that was made in white vinegar and it's nickel beautiful green color nickel is really pretty there's all kinds of videos on how to make that. You need nickel, and that's why I wanted to nickel plate this wrench. So I'm using a new kind of nickel. I used to use guitar strings. I used to get nickel wound guitar strings and unwind the nickel and use that. But now I have nickel bars. You will need a power source. It takes DC voltage to nickel plate. Now I have a power supply. I'm fortunate. I have a, a low voltage power supply. I plate with two volts and I think that'll have to come in a second video um, to tie this one off. I think we'll take a second video. But you probably have enough power, or not probably, you do, just in the ba batteries of this flashlight to electroplate. You don't need a fancy power supply. In fact, I nickel plate with two volts and the two batteries and this flashlight are three volts that would easily be enough power to nickel plate. Of course you have to clean. I use the grinder. This is my favorite grinder. I made a video on why I like this grinder so much after I put the start relay on it. You should watch that video. You're gonna clean. Of course you're gonna file. You're gonna wire brush. And the reason I'm talking about that, the reason I bring this up, and I'm not going to make a video on how to file and all that other stuff. There are hundreds of videos out there where people do that. But we're going to get to the point where regardless of how much you file, regardless of how much you wire brush, here's lesson number one that we're going to talk about. 
the metal is not clean enough. That was the first mistake I made, not getting the metal clean enough. And to get the metal clean, you're going to use brake cleaner. We use brake cleaner for everything. That won't get the metal clean enough. And you're going to use some sort of degreaser. That won't get the metal clean enough. You're going to have to do what I'm going to show you here in just a second. But I want to talk about this first in prepping the metal. I put all the solder out for a reason. In this particular wrench, there were some pretty big dents in it. The wrench I'm restoring lived a hard life. It was beat on pretty hard. The handle was bent. I'm not restoring the wrench to absolute perfection. I just want it straight and I want the big dents and stuff. But some of the gashes where the wrench had been hit with a hammer were so deep, there's no way you could file them out. Those dents have to be filled in. And like some other videos where they fill in with body putty, you can't do that if you're going to powder, if you're, um, I probably could if I was powder coating, but remember I'm electroplating this with nickel and you can't put body putty in there. Plus it wouldn't last on a tool anyways. So I elected, I didn't want to get my oxyacetylene torch out in silver solder. I didn't want a MIG weld. I didn't want to arc weld on this wrench. It's not treated, it's not uh, hardened or tempered steel. This is a cheapy wrench. But still, I didn't want to heat it up that much. So I just used my small propane torch and a small tip. And I try a variety of solders and a variety of fluxes. Um, the one that actually worked best was Stay Bright, which isn't in this pile, and a liquid flux, which I don't have. It's, they're downstairs in my other shop right at the moment. That solder seemed to work best. Remember on steel, you sometimes have to scrub the solder in to get it to stick. So the deep gashes... I soldered in, and then of course you do some more filing. So I bring this all up because the first step obviously is prep, but that's not really what this video is about. Here is what I want to tell you in this video. Here is one of the first places I made mistake when I started nickel plating. I assumed when I took the part out of the wire wheel, which is this guy. I assumed when I cleaned it off with detergent and I assumed that when I sprayed everything down the brake cleaner that the metal was ready to go. That's not the case. You have to do this step. But this is an easy step and it involves chemistry. But you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know this. I'll talk you through it here in just a second. But if you're going to plate at home, nickel plate, first step, of course, is do whatever you want to do to take the dents out and to file. That's your own business. You do what you want to do. The next step is chemistry. We're going to use acid. First, we're going to start with acid. Then we're going to go to an alkali, a base solution. But step one is I have this in a little tub. I found a little tub in the kitchen and all that plastic stuff that you wish your wife would flow, throw away. I found one that just fits perfect. I filled it up with water and phosphoric acid. That's what you want to know. Phosphoric acid. You may already have this in your house. Well, if you have cans of cola, you already have phosphoric. If you drink a can of cola, you're drinking phosphoric acid. Or any soda pop for that matter. But there are other forms of phosphoric acid... I use concrete etcher. That's phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is wonderful to have in your shop because it converts rust. You don't want to put your metal parts in any other kind of acid, like muriatic acid or anything. That acid will eat rust away, and then when the rust is gone, it keeps eating the metal. Phosphoric acid doesn't eat metal. It's safe for metal. And when the acid is completely converted, that's what it does, it converts the rust into something else, then it stops. And you cannot get parts clean enough on the wire wheel to get rid of all of the acid. I've had these parts soaking for about six hours now, and you can still see bubbles coming up where there's some chemical reaction going on. Those little hydrogen bubbles, 
and the phosphoric acid finds everything that the wire wheel does not find. And the phosphoric acid converts the rust to something else. And this isn't chemistry class. And by the way, here's what I do with the phosphoric acid when I'm done with it. Because nothing's going to go to waste in my shop. My beautiful pin oak tree in my front yard. He likes the soil a little bit more acidic than what Mother Nature has given us where I live. So I put phosphoric acid gently around the tree. You have to be pretty careful doing that. You have to water it in and stuff like that. But the tree likes a little bit more acidic soil. I use phosphoric acid. And then the tree will have nice red leaves in the fall. So when I'm done with this acid, I'm going to dump it into grass. When it's raining, just like it is right now as a matter of fact, and let it acidify the soil. So again, back to the theme of this video. This nickel plating is something you can do. Certainly you can clean the part. You have wire brushes and whatever it takes. Certainly you can go find phosphoric acid. It comes in a variety of forms. This is how I find it. Soak the part in phosphoric acid. Put the acid carefully on your acid-loving plants. Then let's go on to the next step. More chemistry. Now, to clean the oils off of the part, we're going to use a very basic solution, an alkali. Ammonia. Bleach is even more basic yet, more powerful base. I'm going to use ammonia. This stuff is a dollar and a half a jug. So after I get done shooting this video, I'm going to dump this out. I'm going to rinse it off. And then I'm going to put this ammonia in and let it sit a short period of time in the ammonia. And the ammonia will completely take off any grease. Then this part is ready for electroplating. And I think that's going to be the next video because I can't tie videos together. I don't have the software to do that. And that'll probably be tomorrow now before I plate this. And I might plate it right in this bin. I think I'm going to take my solution and just pour it right into this bin, this little tray, and use that in my power supply. Now just a note. Here's the screw in that shank that's in the tool. I've already done this. Like I said, I started on this before I thought about making a video. And look how nice and silver that is. And you have to trust me, when I dug this part, this tool that is, out of that box, it was not like this. I had a hard time getting the thing apart. It was so rusty. But look how beautiful that is. And it won't rust. In the next video where I actually electroplate, I'm going to use this nickel bar. And this is the bar I use to nickel plate this. So this is kind of new to me. I'm not going to use the guitar strings. It really pays to keep everything clean. I have this nickel bar sitting on this cloth here on my workbench. But before I use this nickel bar, I'm most certainly going to clean it. Because when I put the nickel in the bar into the solution, you don't want to risk contaminating your solution. And of course, when I nickel plate it in the next video, I will use a power supply. But if you don't have a power supply, I think you can be kind of clever and find something in the 3 volt DC range. A couple of these batteries would work. You don't need an expensive power supply. But you would not want to use a 12 volt battery charger either. That's 12 volts is way too much. You could probably get by with a 6 volt lantern battery, especially one that's half dead already. I think would be perfect. So before I end this video, I just want to reiterate one point. This is what I want you to know. Nickel plating is kind of easy. I would like to see you start doing it in your garage. It's a nice uh, thing to be able to do. And the point of this video is, it really doesn't take a whole lot of money or expensive chemicals to get going. Take some of this, yeah, nickel is about the most expensive thing I have, and some sort of power supply. That's the trick. Once you have that, 
And I'm sure you all have grinders and files and stuff like that in cleaners. See, this is just common garage stuff. You can nickel plate with just about everything you have in your garage. Yeah, go to Guitar Center and get some guitar strings or order some nickel on eBay. And you might have to get some phosphoric acid and some sort of power supply. Now in the next video, we're actually going to plate this, I think. And in the meantime, while you wait for the next video, if you've made it this far, you can watch other videos online on how to make the solution. That was about as easy as it gets. And the other tip that I have for you, remember tip number one that I've given you already is cleaner than clean. Metal has to be super clean. But you want to keep your solution you don't want it to get contaminated. I don't put anything in the solution other than clean parts. I keep a lid on it. You want to keep that solution clean. All right. Thank you. All right. The storm is kind of over. I'm going to dump out the phosphoric acid solution right onto the tree. Then I'm going to put the metal in the ammonia solution for maybe a couple hours. Then tomorrow night, we will actually do the nickel plating. So thank you for watching my video. And hopefully this video gives you the confidence to go out and do this yourself. It's really easy to do and the results are great. Thank you. See you in the next video.